and you knew this was coming. The one friend has gone rogue and made a dramatic exit because of drugs and whatnot. And now people from both camps have to go find him. I'm telling you, for sheer dramatic impact, I'm hoping the old sod is dead. As an audience member right now, you probably don't want that. But who cares what you want? You're not steering the Titanic. Your deck's below waiting for Rose to unlock the cages. brother said he left on Wednesday and hasn't been back since. Maybe he's at the church now. He's not. Stick is there and he's, he's not. He's not there. Hey. Any luck on little Tiny? No, sorry. Me and Tiz drove around a bit, but didn't see him anywhere. Do you want me to check the pub? No, he's not at the bar. Keep praying for him, H. We can't find little Tiny, John. Maybe your prayers couldn't get through this apocalyptic storm. I did everything logical. I called the police, we looked everywhere he might be. I don't know what else to do. Yeah? Can you pick me up at the school? The roads are really fucking bad. If you can't do it, I'll call Dan. We're coming. I don't know why we're out driving in this shit. Nobody uses that field in the winter, dude. That's not how his mind works, Tiz. Hey, what's that over there? Pull over. LT, are you okay? Are you hurt? I don't know. I don't feel hurt. I feel cold. How long have you been here? <sighs> A while, man. It was daylight when I slid off the road. Like this morning, probably. Where's your cell phone? I have no clue. I just wanted to hang out for a while and think. And then I fell asleep. Your friends are worried about you. Yeah, I knew they'd be. But I need a break from them, too, you know? I don't blame you there, but they're still your friends. Is he okay? His pancreas is on the dashboard, Tiz. Call a tow truck. No ambulance? No ambulance, no cops. Not just yet, not until I get his pancreas back in. <sighs> Such a dick. What do you expect? Life just gets harder every day, guys. It never gets any better. It usually doesn't. But it can, LT. It's not impossible. I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to fix my problems so they don't come back. Then don't fix them. I have to. Why? I have a drinking problem. I can't stop drinking. Then don't stop. Just cut it down. He's right, LT. Do you really think it's possible for you to stop completely? That's not realistic. Just downshift instead of turning off the car. Downshift? Hmm. No one ever told me that. They're all like, you gotta stop. Let me guess, AA? <laughs> yep. All the answers from AA are black and white. It works for some people, but certainly not everybody. Balance is the key, not abstinence. I don't want another DUI, man. We're not gonna call the cops. 
We'll get you to the hospital, LT. Thanks, guys. At least you remembered to turn the hazards on. <laughs> no, I didn't. I think that's what my head hit. What did this guy just say? Cars. Where's the driver? He's down there. In the car? Yeah, he's down there with my friends. They're talking. W what's he doing in the car? Oh, gee, I don't know. Folding origami? Making out? Who the fuck cares? Oh, man, you're really stuck. Me to attach these two. How about your fucking balls? Balls. <laughs> Stop thinking there are rules to life. There aren't. Thanks, man. You know, Anita said you're a real asshole. But I like you. I think you're cool. She just needs to get laid. I think he wanted us out of the car. Fuck it. Let's live a little. God for Union Health Insurance. Couldn't you have broken your arm or your leg? I mean, your head's messed up enough already. I shouldn't have been driving. I was lucky to get out of there with no cops coming. Did you call your sponsor? I did. I did before I left, and uh, he never called me back. You need a new sponsor, little tiny. No, he doesn't. It's garbage. It isn't helping him. He doesn't need it. Seriously? Now? No, no, no. He's right. It's not working for me. You gotta stick with it, tiny. No, I feel stuck with it, H. I don't want help from strangers. What I need is help from my friends. Tiny, we're all here for you. All of us. Plant-based diet, help you heal. you hit your head. I did. I just like the taste of Tums. Even when you don't have a stomach ache? Yeah. You know, they make a candy similar in taste to Tums that isn't in the antacid. Yeah, I know. They're not Tums. Bro! <laughs> Joy! Is little Tiny okay? He's okay. He just banged his head. You just missed him. Oh, God, I'm so relieved. Who found him? It was actually me, John, Tizzy, and David. It was sort of a group effort. For the owner of the blue Prius, KAW728, who 
What's wrong? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm just... Uh, it's, it's just been a rough week. The week ain't over yet. We have the debate tomorrow, remember? I'm glad we met you and Tizzy. And John. I'm glad I met you too, Joy. You want to grab something to eat? Are you thinking something vegetarian? Uh, aren't you? No. I like eating meat. Marshmallows? Bourbon? Are you going to tell her or am I? Is that you texted me the other night? How'd you get my number? She needs to know, John. I don't think she does. Well, I do. And if you don't tell her, then I will. Then tell her. Tell me what? John hasn't been entirely truthful to you or us, H. What do you mean? I used you. What? I used you. I just played your little game and joined your circle of friends because I wanted to debate Pastor Tiresias. And I knew I could get to him through you. I'm sorry, but that's the truth. I don't believe you, John. It doesn't matter if you don't believe me. That's the truth. It was wrong. I'm sorry. No, it's not. We're friends. You, you wouldn't do that to a friend. What did I tell you when we first met? You don't make a friend in a day. You don't make a friend in a week. It usually takes months. It takes years. That's not the way life works. It is for some people. Not for me. God brought you to me for a reason. You're my friend! We are not friends. <laughs> ah, fuck! No fucking hot chocolate for you! Ugh. Oh, God. Ow, what the fuck? Once wasn't enough. She fucking smacked me in the face. Did you deserve it? No. Fuck no. Maybe. Hell has no fury. No, oh, no, no, that's not it. I wasn't trying to fuck her. You were just trying to use her. Yes, and I told her that. I was honest with her. And that's when she smacked you? Nobody cares about honesty anymore. Did you tell her you were sorry? For what? For using her to get to the preacher. I told her I was sorry it was the truth. So you're not sorry you did it? I was just told not to show up to the debate. And? I'm still going. What does that have to do with you being sorry? I need a ride, not a psych consult. You're getting both, my friend. Now tell me a little bit about your childhood. Ah, I'm glad you're back. This pie sucks. I didn't make it. Find the person who did. Find them and bring them here. You're having a bad night. Your smile is curing it. Look at it this way, you can work on Christmas Eve. Could be a good tip night. More Christmas money for better pie. Yeah, well, it's not a good tip night. Why not? Because even on Christmas Eve, there's some cheap motherfuckers. Bye. Thanks for stopping by. It's usually busy with lonely people and the ones hungry after midnight mass. 
They're always hungry, right? Ooh, that is bad. It's like someone poured kindergarten paste in a pie tin and added food coloring. Are you going to be here tomorrow? I have to go to church, but maybe after that? I'd like to... I'd like to talk to you about something. Really? What's it about? It's a surprise. Hmm. Okay. Interest peaked. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow. Jesus Christ, no more, woman. How's your cheek? Just dandy. Want me to turn the other one to you? That was fun. So, what do you think of my text? How is she going to lose her scholarship? <sighs> you like data, right? What's that term you're always throwing around? Empirical evidence? Yeah, I like evidence. <sighs> Have you seen any of the videos of Pastor Philip debating people on Christmas Eve? A few of them. Did you see the two atheists debate Pastor Philip? How pissed they made him? How they basically embarrassed him in front of his congregation? They did a good job, but I can do better. John, the two students did what Heather's doing with you. They brought in atheists for the final part of their project. The atheists debated Pastor Philip, and those two students lost their scholarships. No fucking way. Yes, fucking way. That's not enough of a data sampling. It's only two people. But it happened, John. It happened. Remember the time that I decided to believe in Jesus Christ. It's all come down to this, hasn't it? I mean, we must be approaching some type of asexual climax soon. Although watching our antagonists get bitch-slapped twice may have been worth the wait. Will there be lessons learned beyond that, I wonder? Probably. Not like the ones in Blade Runner, though. Fucking replicants running all over the goddamn place causing trouble. What if Blade Runner were a Christmas movie? Hmm. And every time I put my knees to the ground I didn't feel a thing Just praying to the shadows on the walls But it was just the trees I was only trying to Trying to believe I spent my whole life trying To send my soul It is our duty as Christians to follow the laws that God has set before us. I respectfully see your point of view, Pastor Philip, but I choose to disagree. You have taught us to love all people, so I will continue to do that regardless of who or what they are. God loves us all, does he not? He does, he does. God is love. He even loves the sinner. He just hates the sin. I want to thank Stephanie for There's a nobody here. discussion. Who would miss the debate? Our debate I think it was probably the snowstorm. Remember, as oh. much so as this yeah. blizzard that God has laid upon us. Now, we come to the final debate of the evening before our traditional Christmas Eve service. And this debate should be, if nothing else, entertaining and enlightening. Hello, Heather. Hello, Pastor Philip. Unfortunately, I have some bad news. My friend John was not able to make the debate tonight.
Oh, well, that's terrible. I was really looking forward to this, well, especially because, well, it's the final part of your scholarship project. I know. I have prepared something to read to you in its place, and I hope that you will grant me the grace to accept this in place of the debate. Well, I suppose I don't have much of a choice now, do I? <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> Pastor Philip, I don't want him to speak. Tough shit. I'm speaking. Pastor Philip, I... Excuse me. If you do want to speak in my church, you will refrain from using language like that. Your church, your rules. Pastor Philip, I would prefer to read the statement I've prepared instead of John speaking. And why do you not wish this man to speak? I, I fear he has been corrupted by the devil. <gasps> well, that's a very serious accusation, my dear. Very serious indeed. And what... Say you to this charge, John. I assure you, the only thing that's corrupted me in this life is craft beer, an occasional visit to an online adult website, and this horrible girl from college named Susan Collins. <laughs> never met any devil, never will. <sighs> Do you want to debate, or you want to just sit here and stare at each other? Heather, please. Have a seat. So, Heather tells me that you're uh, an atheist? I'm more of an anti-theist. I reject all present notions of gods brought forth by human-invented religions, especially ones that were thought up or dreamt up in a time where science was minimal and Men were ignorant and fearful of things they didn't understand. So, your premise, as I understand it, is that uh, there is no Christian God. No. You and people like you claim that there is a Christian God of your fairy tale. I'm telling you that you need to prove he exists. Oh, well, John, why don't you prove that he doesn't exist. Why would I need to prove something doesn't exist if it's never been proven to exist in the first place? Because he is real. To all of us gathered in here tonight, he is very real. He is the father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, your Savior as well. Amazingly, your spoken words aren't convincing me. You sound like just another brainwashed sheep bleeding from the top of a mountain. Well, that's just fine, John. You don't have to believe anything I'm saying. We are taught as Christians to spread the good news, the gospel, in order to save as many souls as possible. Now, if you reject Jesus as your savior... Right, well, well what's gonna happen? I'm gonna burn in hell, right? Do you know how many times I've received that weightless threat from people like you? Have you even figured out by now how we just don't care when you say it? Because you are separated from God. You're already preparing yourself for hell. You cannot fear or revere that which is out of the range of your senses. What you don't see, hear, feel, or touch. Don't forget smell. Now, as Christians, we are aware of both. The rewards that await us in heaven and the penalties for disobeying God. Penalties? Your religion is a mechanism that allows people to, f to mess up again and again, over and over. And then when they mess up and they finally get caught, they just say, I only answer to God. They take no personal responsibility for what they've done, which is all great and fine until messing up becomes routine and easy. It becomes something you welcome because in the end, you're going to be forgiven for it anyway, so what does it matter? How old are you, John? Forty-three. Well, one day, whether you like it or not, you will fall ill 
and you will die. And what then? What do you mean, what then? Then I'll be dead and I won't be able to participate in a debate like this. It's almost as if you would prefer that the world have no God. Do you sleep easy at night, rooting for an existence with no hope of justice, of, a, of knowing you'll never see people you love ever again, of knowing you'll never behold anything that you find beautiful ever again? Of course no one wants that. What we desire and want doesn't change whether something is true or not. This is the entire problem with your religion. Our religion has no problems, I can assure you of that. It was created in a time of ignorance when men were being rotten to other men. No one had any solutions to solve these problems of men being awful amidst their own ignorance. So someone created this in hopes of putting a mental leash on those they couldn't control. <laughs> and uh, you've been misinformed, John. Christianity is used to control. So is Islam. So is Judaism. All religions are a control mechanism used to control men. They're used to elicit fear in the common individual just to keep them in check. This man is really interesting. No, no. We do not rule by fear here. John, we do not rule at all. We come together in kindness to serve our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to help the unfortunate and to make this world a better place. You can do all those things without serving any Lord. You can just do them because it's the right thing to do. Why will you not, sir? Our church and the Christian religion have done more for this planet and the people on it than you could ever dream of in that closed little mind of yours. Sure you have, sure you have. You give food and help to people as long as you can give them a Bible along with it, right? When was the last time you helped someone without ever mentioning your religion or religious beliefs? Well, I'd say plenty of times, but the kindness of our, our faith goes hand in hand with the kindness of our Charity. Don't you realize that you'd have so much more credibility if you just did good based on your own empathy? Not just because a book outlines what a hypocritical human design God wants, and you're worried you won't please him. Have you ever asked God to reveal himself to you? Plenty of times. Oh, I... I, I doubt that you have, John. Are you there, God? It's me, John. <laughs> Reveal yourself. Well, it, does, it doesn't quite work like that, John. Of course it doesn't. Do we need to be in a special room with a religious heart antenna so we can get a good connection to Jehovah? Every time you mock me, or the people in this room, or, or Jesus, or God, you show the world your true colors. You show us all the, the, the hate that lives in that atheist heart of yours. Aha, uh -huh. and that's it, isn't it? That's it. That's the end of every argument about religion that's ever been had on this planet. Someone must be hateful if they don't accept your religion or your religious beliefs. Let's apply the word hate in an improper and incorrect connotation because the lazy thinker who hears it will immediately assume the hateful one is wrong, regardless of the points presented. You are aware that this is why people love atheists and their ideologies. We don't have an ideology, and people don't loathe us. The only people that loathe us are the ones who are struggling with the stupidity you force them to revolve their life around. So, you look down on all these people here, all these good people that come together advocate peace and, and helping others. Oh, they're all beneath you. You can't put words in my mouth. Any good deeds they do are still good deeds. They don't have to be religious to be good. But you do look down on these people, do you not, John? I pity them. I'm sure most of them are good people. What about Heather here? Do you look down on her? Do you, do you pity her? No. 
Well, why not, John? Why not? Because she's different. No, she's a Christian. I thought they were all alike, and you pity them all. I never said that either. It's not wise to lump people with self-applied labels into generalizations. Not even Christians. It'll never end. It's never gonna end. Never end. Well... Should we pity you, John? Hmm? Should we generalize and pity you? Because... Well, you have taken a human life. Do you want me to enlighten the room as to what it is that I'm referring? Or should you do it, John? About eight years ago, I was in a car accident. My car hit a patch of black ice, and I hit a woman. And she was holding the hand of a little girl, this little red-haired girl, couldn't have been more than four years old. And the woman died. They said it wasn't my fault. They said that she just wasn't paying attention and walked into the road. It was just black ice circumstance and horrible luck, this, this poor woman. Is that when you became an atheist, John? No. I was an atheist and anti-theist long before that. We're all born atheists, Pastor. No, that's just when I stopped driving. Was the little girl injured? No, she wasn't hurt at all. I thought that I had killed her mother, but at the trial I found out it was her nanny. I felt so bad for creating that awful memory for her. I wanted to tell her that I was sorry for the circumstance that caused it. I just wanted to hug her and tell her that in life these things can happen. But I never saw her again. Well, God protected that little girl that day, and he forgives you. Well, why didn't he protect the nanny? Why not both? Too much for him to handle? We do not ask our Savior his reasons for what he does. Now, the important thing is that he forgives you. You can't pick and choose what you think is a result of your God. I don't need anything from or care about anything from your pretend God. I care about that little girl. The Lord moves in mysterious ways. We could debate these same arguments over and over and over. They just go around in circles, the same thing. In my opinion, there's only one religion that matters on this planet, and that's the religion of human beings. No God necessary. Experiences, relationships, friendships. They all trump your religion and your God. Well, you can believe that if you like, John, but in this church, our God is everything. These people are everything. They matter much more than your God. You shall not raise your voice to me in my church. John! You said to me this week that we don't make the rules. That's true, you don't. And you just said that the friendships of human beings is all that should matter. For sure. Isn't that you making the rules, John? You refuse to revolve your life around something that doesn't make sense. Isn't that logic, John? Or is it because we all make our own rules, even Pastor Philip here, and do our best to follow them? Isn't that what we do when we don't have all the answers, John? It would appear that I 
don't have all the answers. Well, we do, John. These people, and Heather, and I, and God, we do! I didn't. I just waited to pass you the puck and hoped you'd score the goal. And what if I didn't? Then, I was prepared to lose very ungracefully, with a large temper tantrum and some awful logic. I've never met anyone like you before, John. Well, that's good. When you get older, you want to have unique friends, like the ones you have here. Why didn't you just tell me what happened to you? Would you have told you if you were me? No, but I expect you to now. Corrupted by the devil? <laughs> I didn't know how else to get you off the stage at that point. Well, it was a good try. I'm not. Oh, look. It's time for you to start making the rules. She said she wants to talk to me. Then I'm definitely coming. What about Midnight Mass? We'll make it back in time. Okay. What do you want? I've moved you up a social peg from complete asshole to obnoxious dick with someone of a heart. Hmm. I'll take that. I'm gonna leave yours at uptight bitch that still needs to get laid. That's fair. We need a table for 10. Actually, 11. Oh, 
Hi, John. Hi. I thought you were working tonight. I was supposed to. This is John. We've been friends since we were kids. Hi, John. John. Hey, good to meet you. Eileen said you're a favorite customer. I am? I am. John proposed to me today. Under that pine tree we always talk about at Birchwood, the one I love. And I said yes. With the snow coming down? <sighs> that is so awesome. Congrats. And you are? This is my friend Heather. Congratulations. What did you want to talk to me about? Well, I was going to ask you what you were doing for New Year's, but things have changed. So, my new question is, I was wondering if you might be interested in being a bridesmaid? As long as I can wear a dress that shows off my legs. Thank you, John. I'll see you next year. You slugs want to eat? Follow me. I'm so sorry, John. I don't even know what just happened. Haven't you figured it out yet? Figured what out? There are no happy endings, Heather. There are only happy middles. Christmas miracle. His head's all healed up. Well, 
the outside anyway. You know, for a Christmas story, early on it became very difficult for me to root for any of these people, especially that idiot that went out in the snowstorm, and the one who's always bitchier than a housewife with no hobbies. But this whole lot has grown on me, like Moss. They're good human beings. I want the best for them all, and for myself, and my illegitimate son who only calls me on my birthday. A hammer will always be a hammer to most, I guess. And I need to take advantage of these precious late mornings of sleep. is coming. Yep. You made it. Why wouldn't I? And miss the chance to fuck with someone at this gift exchange? Are you kidding me? It's Christmas. Let's open some presents. Thank you, Mandy. A tattoo session? I knew you wanted a new one. It's perfect. Thank you, Mandy. Manny, I guess I'll have to get a record player. Actually, no. It's old, but it uh, has a new needle and it sounds perfect. If you had fun at the punk show the other night, you're gonna love this album. I thought this was like a white elephant or gag gift exchange. Nope. It's whatever you want it to be, John. It's fine. I think I better go next. You're gonna love this. It's the best vegan restaurant in Palatine. That's not the real gift. I'm just kidding. I'll be right back. This is the real gift. Oh, Raul. He's beautiful. I hope it's not too soon. 
I just wanted it to be special. We'll have to think of a good name for him. How about Brad too? How about shut the fuck up? Thank you. Is every gift gonna be this emotional? I'll lighten up the mood a little bit. Is. Open it, dog. I always get to choose the, the norms and the trailers. This is the menorah bomb. Yeah. This will go great with the seven other menorahs I have on my mantle at home. No, man, we're gonna light that bitch up when we play this. Oh, you got the new one. Yeah. The, ah, <laughs> you got me with the menorah bomb. It works, though. I'm sure it does. <laughs> yeah. Damn, thanks, Joy. Open it. Oh, nice. These headphones. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm going to listen to my new beats. <laughs> oh. <laughs> There's no secret Santa here. You rigged this whole thing. I did not. You rigged every nauseating pair. Thank you, David, and fuck you, John. Ah. So jealous. What's he doing? He is cutting off his own head so we can bathe in the blood of his jealousy. I'm sorry, David. He's making this about him, and this is your present, and no matter what it is, I am going to fucking love it. Are those skull earrings? I was gonna lie and say that I loved it, but I really do fucking love it. Really? Yeah. I'll go next. For me? Thank you. It's a vegan cookbook, everybody. <laughs> You're so thoughtful. Thank you so much, Heather. You're gonna go far in this life. Bless you, Raul. Have some real food, Astro. No, oh, this isn't bad if you're used to eating kibbles and bits for your diet. Okay, we got four left. Who's next? Well, aren't you gonna open it? Kind of afraid to open it. <laughs> Why? Mostly because I usually like the part of the present where you're thinking about the present more than the actual present. Okay. Well, I'll wait and watch you wait. Okay, my turn. Oh my god, Tiny, are you seriously not gonna open your present? I will, I will. I want to. Me and Anita are just gonna enjoy the anticipation. I had no idea what to get an atheist. I really had no clue. But then it hit me when we were sitting in my car. It hit me harder than my head hitting the dashboard. So here you go, man. You know I already have one of these, Tiny, right? That's why I'm an atheist and anti-theist. You don't have that one. Go ahead, open it. Well done, LT. Well done. 
Two people left. Well, I guess I'll go next so John can be over fucking dramatic and go last. Give him another kiss. Such a bullshitter. I tried to help Tiz pick out a cactus for you, but she wouldn't let me. I told her to get an extra prickly one. One that didn't need a lot of water. You and I have one thing in common. We're both bitches to the core. So Merry Christmas, bitch. It's perfect. Thank you. No problem, bitch. So much foul language. John's last. Who's left to receive? Heather. What are you praying for? Whatever gift you got me isn't anything too embarrassing or crazy. for a couple of years now from this atheist group that we frequent. I never really knew him, though, until he mentioned you. And I've always been watching out for you. Me a drone. <laughs> I'd say I'm tearing up, but that would make me a liar. I don't cry much myself. Only when I see an old porno I used as a child. I know, I know. Just narrate, dummy. I think that... Wait a minute, what's this? Oh no. Bad idea, mates.
It's just another holiday, another time to play. I guess it's just like all the rest. We never say what we want to say. It comes up every year, a blanket for my cheer. Emotions that I have for you will never, will never ever make it here. So I won't be open on Christmas just like it used to be. No, I won't be open on Christmas. I guess I'll wait for you to see. They say my problem's real They say I need to heal I don't know, I guess I do I guess I never really knew how to feel But what if in actuality Everyone picks their own misery The one that really fits them best Yeah, that makes sense to me Then, then we, we won't, won't be open on Christmas We'll find another way to be No, we won't be open on just smile at those we see My little friend is dead I miss his precious head but now you've got a brand new friend One to bring you warmth in bed I've had bread since I was eight I helped him lick his dinner plate Hopefully not every time Only when we were on a date You know humans can make great pets too We are faithful and we're true No fur, no tail, no purr you fail Kidding, I think you might do So let's not be open on Christmas Let's get through the thing on our own Let's keep everything shut on Christmas We'll spend it together alone Hey, us Jews, we have it rough with the Holocaust and all that stuff. Hanukkah comes and it's time to nosh, so give me some lockies and light the shamash. But hey, I kid, I'm here to joke. When you smile is when I poke. Life is hard up until we croak, and it ain't easy when your shit is broke. My shit ain't broke, in fact, it's intact. We can smoke to that, cause you know I got your back. So when you light your menorah, I'm the flame. Stick is the name, and this ain't no game. Uh, Hanukkah is, uh, kinda lame. No, my Hebrew, that's not how we do. See me and you, we must stay true. And our friendship is that of the human race. When I see your face, I see my face. You got much more hair up there. And you were that silly cat. Can you tap? If I do, that's the end of this rap. Yes, sir, we. supposed to fall? Never thought it could be like this Every time I see her eyes My Thoughts move right down to her Thighs? How the fuck did I fall for 
him He thinks that God is real and shit He's everything I fight against But wow, he makes me kinda wet We don't belong together, us two At least that's what some people will yell No one I would see to hell I bet she said They can go to hell But of course, hell doesn't exist. Then we won't be open on Christmas, but we'll hold each other tight. We will be with each other on Christmas. And have a most unholy night. I bet you think that I'm a bitch, a terrible and nasty witch But I didn't used to be like this When you lose someone, you learn to hiss It's okay to be mad at life It's okay to hate that bitch As long as you remember that Your friends will help you in a pinch Thus I won't be open this Christmas I'll just keep my frown in play I will not stay open We have our misery this Christmas We have our aches, we, we have our stress But we share all of us as friends this Christmas That's actually a really hot dress. Thanks. You're rocking that too. This dance, it never ends It just goes on and on Back and forth and back we go As time keeps time and marches so Are there no solutions here? Is this how things will always be? No common ground, just black and white I just want peace for all to see That's why I Okay, stop, just hold it there You've got it wrong just like before What you don't get is simple shit Your brain why so won't process this Believe in your God all you want Love him, praise him, suck his Just realize that others here Don't ever, ever have to pick What about your eternal soul? We have to care, we have to try We'll be fine, don't fret or cry But you're my friend and I mustn't lie What you believe is likely myth But it gives you comfort, keeps you sane So the common ground that we both seek Is kind of like this candy cane you're the red and I'm the white Together we both twirl and swirl And in the end we're united and sweet Just, Just people, people who live as life unfurls So we have to be open on Christmas For this crazy world to work Just find a way to smile on Christmas Christmas, cause in the end <sighs> It beats being a jerk
find our way through this Christmas with our friends both old and new. We'll remember what we learned this Christmas. No, God is okay. Faith is okay. Anger's okay. Really okay. Vegan's okay. Grief is okay. I'm okay. Jews are okay. Satan's okay. Musical montage is like, this shit are okay. But most of all, disappointment's okay. Because this is our happy middle. And it happens to be on Christmas Day. Musical sequences are fucking gay. On Christmas This is where he asked her. This is the tree? It's beautiful. It's tainted now. Too many Johns in the world. It's very peaceful. Do you want to know why I believe in God, John? Not really, but if I had to guess, it would probably be because of your brainwashed parents indoctrinating you when you were a kid. Yeah, that's probably part of it. But the real reason is, it's when I see beauty in nature like this. Like this tree covered in snow. It's beautiful without a god. I'm thinking of going to a non-Christian school. Careful now. You're starting to think for yourself. I am. And it's because of meeting you, John. I mean that. One of the hardest things to do in the world is change, especially when you're taught to dare not even try it. It takes time, but if you're lucky, sometimes you can be a witness to that change. And in that special moment, that great moment of self-awareness, you will smile the biggest smile of your entire life. Happy middles, right? Beginnings are always a bitch, and endings are always awful. All we have are the middles. The object of the game should be to find anyone who doesn't have a happy middle and find a way to get them one. I'm going to help you get yours, John. And I'm not just going to pray for you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to find a way so you get your smile. I don't think you can help me, Heather. I don't think anybody can. <laughs> me helping you exists whether you like it or not. Doesn't really matter what you think. How about you focus some of that prayer juju on the Packers losing this weekend? <laughs> Get the Bears in the playoffs. What do you say? Can you do that? I think that's a fair in that direction. Is your God capable of affecting the outcome of a football game? <laughs> Tell me, what part of your brain controls how the prayers move in the ether? Oh, look. Stan. 
Think of the money we could make. Think of the money we could make by having better prayer delivery. You still getting the 1025 train out of Palatine? Yep. You don't want to miss it. I'll see you around. Sometime. Oh, you'll see me soon, all right. I'm going to come to all your fucking hockey games until you accept Jesus Christ as your savior. You watch your mouth, Missy. New Year's plans? Almost had some. Not anymore. Tizzy's pussy whipped and Raul's about to be. <laughs> Maybe you need to be pussy whipped. Do you some good. I've been pussy whipped by life, man. Haven't we all? I don't understand how you meet someone you're attracted to and suddenly they become as important as the friends you've had your whole life makes no sense to me. People do it anyway. People do a lot of things. Anyway. And therein lies the brutal truth of life, Danny. We're hardwired to be illogical. It'd be pretty boring around here if we weren't though, right? I think it would be a lot better. You've never given me a $200 tip before. Then I never will again. Get rid of that fucking cough. Will the owner of the blue Prius parked on the railroad track please fuck off?
Here you are. listening to my voice the whole movie, your mind decided on what I looked like a long time ago. Little did you realize you'd be staring at a stud muffin placed in the front row of a glass case at the Bakery of Life. Who wrote this shite? Tree and neck? No? No. Oh look, I've been put in front of a green screen so they can make it look like I'm standing in front of some quaint Christmas village in the Swiss Alps about to watch some town light their fucking Christmas tree. In actuality, I'm in the public library wishing I was drunk. Who knew libraries didn't have their own pubs? What's this? That's my credit? Elderly? Someone's taken the fucking piss. I'm the furthest thing from a pruny geezer, and I can prove it. Listen, I may remind some of you of old Saint Nick, but... Yes. You there, pretty girl in the seventh throw. You look like, yeah, you look like you'd be up for a roll in the hay. Hmm. And Shut wait, down. you're a, you're a male, hmm. Okay then, hey, it's a dark theater in 2019. You'll never know what you're gonna get, but I'm young! Listen, you get what you pay for here. If you want Morgan Freeman talking about penguin screwing, then I'm gonna need more coin. I'm of that. Nah. Nah. Maybe it's like a Christmas story. I'm just an adult version of one of the young characters in this magnum opus. Yeah. I'm just that jewel grown up. After he lived in London for 20 years, 
with me and ask him to do me back. Hey, I see Jason there. The bloke owes me 13 bucks. Did you pay to see this trash? You could have paid me back instead. You haven't seen what fucking wanker. You to tell me what I should believe. This is my life, my thoughts, my opinion. Just because I don't believe you label me a sinner, but don't be mad at me. We gotta stop with all the hatred. Bad enough, I got that's all I've got, folks. The well is dry, and so is my throat. So it's off to the pub to, well, to drown my sorrows. You see, my boy died in a tragic chimney accident on Christmas Day 1983, and no, I'm not going to read this anymore. It's all shit. You all have a happy Christmas, especially you in the third row with those giant. After the song, I no longer want to be judged from my shoes until you try them on. Be a leader in this shit, fuck a ride along. And if you think you're better than me, then you're gonna die alone. Don't be mad because I don't get down on my knees and pray. It doesn't mean that I don't seize the day. Now we can conversate and talk about how our views are different. You ignorant if you refuse to listen, but don't be mad at me. You haven't seen what I've seen. So who the fuck are you to tell me what I should believe? This is my life, my thoughts, my opinion. Just because I don't believe you label me a sinner. Don't be mad, don't be mad because I don't get down on my knees and pray. It doesn't mean that I don't seize the day. Now we can conversate and talk Talk about how our views are different. You ignorant if you refuse to listen, but don't be mad at me. You haven't seen what I've seen. So who the fuck are you to tell me what I should believe? This is my life, my thoughts, my opinion. Just because I don't believe you label me a sinner, but don't be mad at me. Don't be mad at me. Don't be mad at me. What I'm spitting on this track is not blasphemy. I'm only asking for you what you ask of me. Look. Don't be mad at me. No shit. Don't be mad at me.